I'm the artist on this game here, Mageling. Right now what I'm going to do is a setup and playthrough of the solo version of the game. First thing to do is pick your character. In the solo version of Mageling, each has its own unique power. I'm going to go with Purple Guy. He can gain you some mana, so that'll be my character. Here's how I like to set up the locations. I've got them all together in this pile. I've shuffled it a little bit. Now the first ever tree I come across, I place down. Uh, the first Grimthorn Forest I place, Rune City, Sky Tower, Cloud Chamber. And if you hear any munching and crunching in the background, that's my cat, Billy. We're filming right next to his food bowl, so it's very exciting for him. All right, next thing to do is set up a row above this row, and that's going to feature the Evertree for a different reason right there on the left. So I've shuffled these, and I'm placing them in a row above the locations. This is going to be the Nexus, so there are five cards. I'll go ahead and reveal them. Along with the Nexus stack right there. This will be the discard pile. Now, for this version of the game, it's going to be five life force on this first location, two life force on the second location, one life force on the third location. I'll put the counter here, and I'll give myself four mana. That's what you're supposed to start with. Place your character on the first location, thus displacing this life force so it goes to the ever tree, which is good. We don't want the ever tree to run out. Revealing the first location, Nafe, and the reveal condition says each player gains two spawns, so. Looks like I can uh, utilize a spirit if I focus that, so I'm just planning on doing that. And here's my reroll. A couple of finesse and some mismatched dice. So um, I'll go ahead and focus, and that'll be the dream. Focusing dream allows me to uh, activate the spirit, which goes in the discard pile. The spirit gives me a mana and allows me to change a die. Uh, I guess I'll change, yeah. It actually doesn't matter, I don't think. Replace that with our next card. And I'm going to animate uh, to gain another mana, which is my character's special power. These are just mismatched, so they're going to be one energy, one more finesse in the focus area, so that's three energy. All right, I'm going to spend my three energy and two mana, thus equaling five. I'm going to purchase Aaliyah. She's my first scroll. All right, now it's the uh, end of my turn, which means it's the doom phase. Move one energy from the tree to the ancient one. Round two. All right, I can activate her. No spirits, so I don't have too much of a preference as far as what to focus. All right, looks like... Uh, Two from Focusing Death, plus uh, a mismatch here will give me three. Trigger Aaliyah, that gives me five. Get the Cosmic Chalice, perhaps? You know, I'm kind of poor right now. I'll try it. Reduce me to zero. Now, I still have two spawns, which means I can't leave the location yet. I really should take care of those. All right, Doom Phase. Here we go. Planning ahead here. Okay, unfortunately I'm worried that this, uh, whoops, ether dice is wasted. We shall see. Aliyah gives me two. The Cosmic Chalice gives me two. If I spend one mana, I can get something cool. Actually, Crimson Portal is amazing. Um, Right now I've got Aaliyah, who's helping me with the uh, the wounds, and Crimson Portal is going to help me a great deal with these spawns. Alright, Doom Phase awakens an Ancient One. Let's see what we're dealing with here. Otar. Discard all spells from the Nexus. Goodbye, Synchronicity. 
And wound a spell or gain two spawns. I do have a spell, so I'm going to wound it. Here we go. Let's uh, trigger Aaliyah. Oops, that should have been zero. Now it's at two. Discard the uh, wound. Thank you, Aaliyah. Power of the forest at work. Crimson portal. It's going to give me two. And what's great about this one is uh, you can discard a spawn to gain a mana. That's awesome. That's going to help a lot. And at that point, uh, I think we're just dealing with well, if I put three in there, then it'll... Yeah, I think... I think this is the way to go. Let's just go up to, uh, to seven. And uh, I'll spend two to defeat the spawn. Now we're free and clear to leave the location. One more mana takes me to six total. Allows me to defeat the Nafe. And uh, flipping the location over means we've left, and there's a little um, energy symbol, mana symbol. It's gonna go back uh, one added to the ever tree. Now, new location is being revealed, and the energy on top of that, or I should say life force, that's really what I meant, it goes to the ever tree. So, what do we got? Miraja, gaining two spawns upon entrance. Now I should really read these local effects here. Focus, dream, to mimic the next card that enters the nexus. Okay. Um, I think that's our turn, so therefore, doom phase. Life force goes over there, and let's rock. Two energy, grab a mana with our special character power. Two more energy, banish a spawn for one mana. That's groovy. Cosmic Chalice, that's two. Well, Open Swamp Pot would give me an ether, which would be nice to have. Plus, I just dig him, so. All right, spending six plus one mana. Buying Tobin. Come on, Tobin. And, uh, yeah, Doom Phase. Which I tell you, this Crimson Portal is really helping me do right now. I would like a couple of divinations, that'd be cool. Nope. We'll be focusing death this turn. We'll be grabbing a mana. We'll be activating Crimson Portal. Banishing a spawn, gaining an energy for that. We'll be utilizing Aaliyah's ability. Two energy from her. And Tobin Swamp Pot. Two energy plus a mana for each activated spell scroll. That's what Crimson Portal is. So this is where the order in which you activate your scrolls really can pay off. Seven plus one mana. All right, feeling good about that. Um, we're actually rocking here. Let's uh, let's spend all of our energy plus a mana and defeat Maraja. She tried to tempt me into her little cabin, but I said, Stranger Danger. We're on a new location, Rune City, making fast progress here. Reveal that. Tempest Spies. Uh, fresh out of uh, G.I. Joe, when Cobra went out of business, they, they went to Rune City. 
Reveal. Each player must discard a mana or else gain a spawn. Um, I have to say, the spawns are actually helping me at this moment. So I'm going to gain them because Crimson Portal is just so so good at turning them into a sweet profit. That will be my turn. Doom phase. Alright, next Ancient One. Asdia. Discard all beasts by Joanna. Vectra. Wound a beast or gain two spawns. I have no beasts, and honestly, I'm feeling pretty friendly with these spawns now that I have like a, a spawn killer of my own. My turn. That's pretty cool, because I want to use Solarin, so yeah, I'm definitely going to focus Div Initium. I'm going to uh, activate Solarin, the spirit, set any unused die to, to any side, um, as well as gaining a mana, so that's awesome. I'm going to... Uh, Set this one to Aether. Aether, I should say. Animate to uh, gain a mana in accordance with my character's specific ability. Crimson Portal, my current favorite of this run. Banish Spawn. Turn it into Sweet Prophet. Aaliyah, doing her thing. Uh, Tobin, gives me a couple energy, plus one mana for each. Activated uh, spell. Don't mind if I do. So uh, let's let's purchase something here. Uh, you know when your when your grimoire starts to get larger, it's good to be able to trigger cards with other cards, or I should say scrolls with other scrolls. So let's go ahead and buy Chaos Ring because now I'm setting up. This is kind of a chain. Anytime I trigger Chaos Ring, Tobin is automatically activated. So. I dig that. This goes back to zero. Doom phase. And my turn. Yet again. It's the beauty of solo play. Alright, not oops, not too lucky on that. Let's go ahead and start with Crimson Portal. Banish a spawn, take an energy, plus two energy, I mean, take a mana, plus two energy. Aaliyah, that brings it to four. Cosmic Chalice, brings it to six. I will grab two energy from here. Or I'll grab one energy and, and a mana. I mean, it pretty much doesn't matter, because I'll probably be, well, maybe it does. Maybe I want to grab something from the uh, Nexus. Magic Cauldron is honestly pretty cool, because like I was saying earlier, I think I was saying this earlier, mana is really important later in the game, so let's, let's buy it. All right, that's that. Doom phase once again. I'll take care of that last spawn. This is groovy. Let's keep these homogenous. Good. Yes. That's what I want to see. Awesome. Crimson Portal gives me two. Banishes the spawn. I get an energy. Chaos Ring gives me two more energy. I trigger Tobin Swamp Bot. He's activated. Two more energy. Gives me an extra mana because I have a spell activated. Aaliyah. Magic Cauldron. Two more mana. That was badass. And we'll focus Hedge, because why not? We're up to nine, we've got no spawns. That was just perfect. We're gonna spend two additional mana and uh, leave Rune City. So now we're headed to the Sky Tower of Aruin. 
That was the life force that Closing Rune City gives us. Discard all cards from the Nexus. All right. If I must. I'm actually feeling pretty good about my Grimoire. Not a ton to be desired. I mean, between Aaliyah and the Crimson Portal early on, that was a nice little setup for me to deal with spawns and wounds, which are things that are pretty annoying if you can't deal with them. That's the end of my turn. And it looks like the Doom Phase will bring in our third Ancient One. So, let's see what we got here. Scion, discard all allies from the Nexus. And wound an ally or gain two spawns. Weirdly enough, I really like the spawns. Let's rock. Crimson Portal gives me two energy, banish a spawn, gain a mana. Chaos Ring gives me two energy, activates Tobin Swamp Pot, gives me two, and uh, that gives me an extra mana from this spell. And now that I'm thinking of it, I'm actually just going to put these together because I feel like maybe that'll help me remember that goes first, and that's the most advantageous order of events here. There's a spirit there uh, in Divination that allow me to set the die to Divination, so... It makes a lot more sense now that I see that to focus here. Planetary Monk is a spirit that is uh, activated. I get that mana. And Yellow Wisp will give me a mana and allow me to set an unused die to Divination. And uh, obviously that's going to be cool because I have something I can use. Up to eight. All right, now I need 16, so you can see why mana is important here. I think I'm going to spend another turn, though. Uh, the Grimoire card limit's 8, so I can still buy some things. Uh, for 8, let's see. Don't have any beasts. Each other activated. The Ethereal Mist. Let's grab it. Takes me down to 2. Doom Phase. be honest, I really want death, so I'm going to actually re-roll all four of these. Nope. That's pretty bad. That's terrible. Alright, so I should have banished the spawn, I guess, last turn. I didn't. Alright, Chaos Ring brings up to four. Uh, might as well do Ethereal Mist, <laughs> which I'm triggering with the Chaos Ring. So, um, plus a mana for each uh, additional activated uh, Ether Scroll, so that'll be two total. Uh, we'll give ourselves two uh, energy from Focusing Dream, and we will uh, animate to gain a mana, which is our character's power. What to do? Let's, let's go ahead and buy our eighth... Scroll, just to be cool. It's going to be Dragon Caster. I know I have to spend three. I'm feeling kind of rich, though. So, that takes me to zero. And uh, I did not get death, so my whole thing about keeping spawns is kind of coming back to haunt me here. That was my cat triggering the washing machine. Doom phase. All right, now I have to leave the Evertree because next turn I'll lose the game. So uh, it's a little bit under the wire, but I'm feeling okay. Oh, it's dream magic. It's not what I need. It's not what I want. I hope I can get another ether. Okay, 
Let's try this. Chaos Ring. Activate Drakencaster. He's going to activate up to two other spells. So go ahead and uh, activate Crimson Portal, which I'm psyched about. Goodbye, Spawn. And Ethereal Miss, but I should have done it. I should have triggered Tobin before. That way I would have profited. But, you know, I'm not going to go back in time. That's lame. That is for lame time travelers. Still gives me three, which is great. I could have had one more. Whatevs. Actually, I profit from uh, doing this after the fact as well, because Tobin's now going to give me an extra mana for each spell. Thank you, buddy. Two energy from him, plus, uh, plus two. two mana. I'm going to use one of these big crystals uh, to stand in us five. Should really be more on that. I've got a few dice left to deal with. Um, let's go ahead and trigger Leah. That's eight. And then we'll focus dream. <coughs> That's ten. So <coughs> I can easily beat this location. Spending six. Goodbye, Tempest Guardians. I hardly knew you. Life Force goes to the tree. And let's see what our final boss is. Cloud Chamber. It's Magmus. Enter, gain a wound. Well, wait. I'm back to zero, but... Let's see, do I have 19 of these? 5, 10, 15. Folks, I have 19 mana, which means I'm going to go ahead and defeat Magmus with my, my riches. I really have a Crimson Portal to thank for a lot of these riches, um, but I, I had some other strategies going that were allowing me to harvest some mana as I went through the game. Um, but all said and done, I have beaten Solo Mageling. Um, as far as scoring works in this game, there is a sheet that is available on the Familiar Games website that will allow you to score your game. What I can tell you is that leaving one energy on the Evertree over here is better than leaving none. So that means I did a pretty good job. I'm a little biased because I'm uh, part of the team that created Mageling, but I'm really digging it. I'm loving the Solo gameplay. Um, people should, uh, should give it a shot. Thanks again, folks, and peace out.